Okay, welcome to video three of the Grab Life by the Heels box set. This one we've named Grab Life by the Prophecies. Again, I love the titles of these. I think they're really funny. I hope, I hope you're enjoying them as much as I am. Grab Life by the Prophecies. And actually in this video, we're going to see where Jacob takes his driving attitude and oversteps the mark into unhealthy striving attitude. So if you're somebody at the start of this box set that thought, I really don't think we should be speaking about these things, this one's going to make you feel a lot better. In fact, we're not just going to look at Jacob. We're going to look at what Rebecca did wrong, what Isaac did wrong, and what Esau did wrong. And it's going to help us understand what we should really be grabbing hold of in life and how we build a healthy, God-centered ambition and initiative within us rather than go into selfish ways. And so that's what we're going to We're going to call this one Grab Life by the Prophecies because that's what they should have done. The family should have grabbed life by the prophecies, not by their own wisdom or their own schemes. So let's look at Genesis 27, the moment where Jacob receives the father's blessing from Isaac. The Bible says this, Now Rebekah was listening to Isaac when he spoke to Esau. And so when Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it back to his father, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare it for me, delicious food, that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord before I die. You see, so Isaac wants to bless Esau. Rebecca's overheard it and now she has a scheme. Now, therefore, my son, she says to Jacob, obey my voice as I command you. Interesting. Go to the flock Bring me two good young goats that I may prepare for them delicious food for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat, and that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, my brother is hairy man, and I'm a smooth man. <laughs> I love it. Perhaps my father will feel me and shall seem to be mocking him and bring a curse upon me instead of a blessing. And his mother said to me, said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go, bring them to me. And the story goes like this, Jacob did it. In fact, he put, up, he put on some hair onto his hands and his back so that when Isaac laid hands on him, he felt that though it was Esau. Now, this is a very fascinating moment because Jacob actually leaves the bedroom with the blessing of Isaac. But my friends, Every single character in this demonstrates a wrong attitude to when it comes to about building ambition and grabbing hold of life and grabbing hold of the things that God has placed you. Because all of them forgot something very, very important. The prophecy. The prophecy that was spoken to the boys at birth. Genesis 25, 23. He says, these two will fight each other. The older shall serve the younger. That is the word of the Lord. The father of the house should have known better. Let me talk about Isaac first and foremost. Isaac was disobedient. Isaac was the father of the house. He knew what God had said to them. And so he should have said to his son Esau, I'm sorry Esau, the Lord has spoken differently I must obey God and bless Jacob. Do you know what's even more funny about this passage with Isaac? Isaac doesn't die here. He was just sick. He actually gets better and lives for a lot longer. So think about it. He had a moment of fear where he thought, I, I might actually die here. And he took advantage of that moment to say, you know what? Because I'm, I'm, I'm scared about dying, you know, I, I can't. I must do something. I must make my plan into action. So, you know, what? I'm going to get Esau. I'm going to bless him right here, right now. And he rushed it. He didn't have patience in the moment. He rushed the moment and was actually disobedient to what God had commanded over their family. Isaac demonstrated disobedience. He should have claimed the prophecy. He should have grabbed life by the prophecy and said, this is what the Lord has said. We will not deviate from it. But instead, he wanted to bless Esau. And then, of course, there's Esau himself, who was like, I'm willing to take this blessing, even though he already sold it. 
He had already treated it with contempt. He knows he did. And he should have let it be. He's already given it away. And he's now trying to strive and get it back. But Esau leaves and goes hunting. And then we see Rebekah and we see Jacob. And again, these two, instead of grabbing hold of the prophecy in a different way, because for these two, Rebekah wanted Jacob to be blessed and Jacob wanted to be blessed, they should have sat there and said, well, God said it was going to happen. So if God said it, it will happen. I don't need to force the hand of God, which is funny because it's a common theme in this family. Abraham was the same. God said, I will give you your son Isaac, who is the guy here in the bed. And what did Abraham do? He panicked. He didn't have patience, didn't think that God would actually do what he said he was going to do. So he stepped up and manipulated the situation to get what he thinks he should get and actually gave birth to Ishmael and then not Isaac. And that started a whole nother problem. And in the same way, Jacob and Rebecca are demonstrating the same attitude. We should be patient. Now, here's something for you. When we are the type of grabbing life people and we have ambition, doesn't mean we rush, doesn't mean we strive. Because we grab life not by the things of this world, but by the things of God. I grab the holy things. I grab the words of God. And I grab hold of them, not my circumstance around me and not things that I think I need to manipulate and control here. I grab hold of what God said. And if God said it, even if it takes the whole of my life, it will happen. I don't need to rush it. It will happen. And it will happen in God's timing. You see, Rebecca didn't think it was going to happen in God's timing. She showed a lack of faith. And then she manipulated She manipulated the situation. Jacob, and what I love, she said to Jacob, check this out. She said, obey my voice as I command you. That should not have been said like that. She should have said, obey the voice of God as he commands you. Again, she took something that was holy and brought it down to common level. Instead of obeying the holy thing, obey the common thing. And she said, obey what I say to you. I'm going to control this situation to get the outcome that you and I want. And she showed a lack of faith. And then Jacob, he did, uh, he showed instead of a grabbing attitude, he showed a deceptive attitude. And he lied to his father. He dishonored his father. He was deceptive towards him, which is why people sometimes still think that the name Jacob can mean deception. He was deceptive towards his father. Why? Because he didn't trust God to show up on his behalf, and he thought, I must control this situation. My friend, you and I should work to grab hold of the prophecies of God. What has God said in his scripture? What has God said through other people? What has God said to me in moments of prayer? Grab hold of the words of God. Obey them as he commanded. Not obey the words and the commands of man, but of God. Grab hold of those and don't take a shortcut. We love shortcuts. Ah. Oh you know, lose five stone in two weeks or whatever it is, you know, make, get rich quick schemes. We love shortcuts. We love things on demand. We love things instantly. But let me tell you, no matter how on demand the world gets, God does not work like that. God works in his own time. God works through process. If God has said something to you, trust me, there will be a process as you receive his prophecy, as you receive his promise. Don't cut corners. And if you're interested, this is the very same temptation that Jesus had when he was tested by Satan. And where Jacob failed, Jesus succeeded. You see, the enemy said to Jesus, turn the stone into bread. Have it now. The temporary thing, you're hungry now. Eat now. It's on demand to you. You can go ahead and do it. But Jesus said, no, because I must do this fast. And what's funny is Jesus knew at some point he's going to eat again. He's going to eat again. He was patient with it. 
And then Satan said to him, well, why don't you throw yourself off a cliff? The angels will protect you. But he knew, Jesus knew, I don't need to cut corners right now. The angels will protect me when it's time for the angels to protect me. And then Satan says to Jesus, Jesus, hey, come on, man. I'll make you the king of all this realm if you bow down to me. But what he didn't understand is Jesus didn't need to cut corners. Jesus knew he had to go through a three-year ministry through pain and persecution, and he had to bow the knee to the Father, but then the Father would exalt him to the place that is the highest place, the name that is above every single name. Jesus had a moment to take a shortcut right at the beginning of his ministry. In fact, the shortcut was so good that he could have received what he received at the end of his ministry right at the beginning. But that's not what God planned for him. God had a journey for him to go on so he would fulfill the prophecies so that he would go to the cross, he would die for our sins, rise again, and then be placed in heaven at the right hand of God. Jesus didn't cut corners. Jesus didn't take shortcuts. Jacob did, Rebecca did, Isaac did, Esau did. You and I don't do that. We are driven, we are ambitious, we are cunning, we are shrewd, but we trust in the timing of God. And we don't obey the commands of man, we obey the commands of God. If you want to grab life by the heels, grab life by the prophecies. 